So I am at the South Bayou of Hamlin Lake, Wellington, Michigan. I'm gonna uh, head up to the other end where the cattails are. See if we can get any bass on this morning. The kayak, it's not a fancy kayak, it's a uh, <clears throat> lifetime Yukon angler. In fact, it's probably one of the cheapest fishing kayaks you can get that's got a decent stadium seat and has a sit on top. But uh, I'm just getting into kayak fishing, so. One cool feature of this yak is that it does have like a feel free, a wheel in the keel. So you can pick it up and roll it right over to the launch. I don't know how long it'll last, and if it hits some dirt, it doesn't do too hot, but. Still, for a 80 plus pound kayak, it's better than nothing. Oh, not doing good in gravel though. There we go. I think I got rocks jammed up in it. Sure do. So it's kind of a chintzy fucking feature apparently. If you roll through any kind of gravel, the wheels have like little hollows on each side. That'll collect up the gravel. And then you're just boned. <clears throat> Probably be a good idea to put my life jacket on before I get out there. On the bright side, once I get through this, nope. <laughs> it's great bass fishing. <laughs> Problem is, yeah, you can really only throw top water on it and hope they come up and slam it. Yep, and catch it in the brakes. <laughs> Oof. I don't know, that's probably what's dragging. It's probably got a ton of weeds wrapped around it. Right. Let's see if I can hand you this before I blow away here. I appreciate you taking the effort when you're out trying to enjoy fishing. Thank you, Jeff. Am I all clear? <laughs> so I'm heading through these two culverts up ahead right there's the launch where you see the docks that's where my truck is where I launched the kayak where I just stopped to put a couple rods away and behind me I don't know eighth of a mile quarter miles where I started the video at fishing by the lily pads now I'm worried the wind is, I'm, I'm paddling directly into the wind, although it's not hitting me bad because it's culverts yet. But I'm worried when I get past them and it opens up to the large South Hamlin Lake. 
it's going to absolutely beat me up. I had the idea that I would uh, uh, push south along the lake seawall and get into this uh, community. It's like a like a mobile home community on the water. They got canals all through it, and it would be a it's a cool spot to fish, and it would be fairly sheltered from the wind. You can't tell. I'm I'm quickly becoming conscious of why even paddle kayakers use use like anchor wizards or drag chains because it is it is just a complete pain in the ass to try to set up on a spot and fish it in any kind of wind and probably even without wind just natural current of the water and the uh shape of the hole is going to naturally want to travel along the water and in, in one direction or another what you see once i get past this this rental area here for pontoons the opening up to the lake i'm gonna take my head my gopro head mount off real quick and make sure i didn't just mess it up bumping it here oh, it looks like all right here we go hopefully it's not a lot of chop Hoping I have the camera oriented straight and tipped tipped the right way, you know, as far as forward or backwards, so it's not just showing the lake, it's still showing like the front of the boat. It doesn't aim straight down, so you're just staring at my legs, but you know, definitely get some bow slap in the chop on this kayak. I don't know if I'm fond of that. I do have scupper plugs in my front two scupper holes. Mainly because I'm a fairly heavy guy. And uh this is this could be this could be rough. Might be getting wet. I don't quite remember how far I gotta paddle south. It isn't very. I mean as far as the drive goes, it's maybe a half mile between where my truck is now and down to this community, but straight line distance along the seawall. I was thinking it should be even less, but I don't know, this is some this is some choppy waters. I'll give it a try. Finally there, that was a pretty pretty brutal paddle. I got beat up pretty bad coming in, but this is the place I was referring to. You see it's like double wide mobile homes on the water. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna throw here. Maybe uh, maybe a little crank, a little crank in a like a sexy shad type style color. If I can get these untangled. Should be throwing up Texas rig or a jig. I didn't throw any. I didn't put any jigs in my dang. What am I doing here? What in the name of God is going on? There we go. I didn't put any jigs in my kayak tackle box. I'm not sure why. I might regret this crank really quick if it's going to be us. Snaggy as I remember it being. So I wish this kayak had like somewhere to stage lures, but you know, a lot of them have like little pockets on the side where you can just drop a, a lure or whatever into and stuff you might reuse, you don't want to put all the way away. Look at that. Seriously, my brand new line cutters are already not working. You're stuck in. The boomerang tool. I'm not sure I would recommend this. Oh, it locks in if you pull up on it. Okay, take back what I said. 
sure that'll serve a good purpose in the future, so. My mistake. Unfortunately, I already seen a bass boat up in here, which is a little disheartening. Oops. I did buy these rod floats. I am not brave enough to test them yet, but hopefully they work pretty good. Right now, I gotta once again reposition. They dredge out the middle of this for all the boats that come in and out of here. It's gotta be uh, four, five, six feet deep. I mean, you got pontoons, but there's also people with stern drives and outboards. At least for a stern drive, I would imagine they dredge it out to at least at least six feet. <coughs> anyway, enough talking. Let's finally do some fishing. balance shifting on the kayak and I kind of panicked right in the middle of the cast. So if you're a shore fisherman like I primarily am or a, a boat fisherman, it's a whole new game in a kayak. There's so, so much consideration that you have to give to factors that don't matter when you're shore fishing or when you're boat fishing. If I snag my treble on my my uh, grab handle up front, I'm not really sure exactly how I would fix it. I would probably just end up leaving the rod till I got back to shore because I am not confident that I would uh, make the right decision and I wouldn't tip my boat. Crankbait is a uh, Ozark Trail Walmart special. Here we go. He got off? No, he didn't get off. Here we go. A little bass, it looks like. Yep. Look at that. First bass in the kayak. Double lipped him, too. Well, heck yeah. dandily stuck right next to me. I'm worried if I reach out and grab him, this guy's going to get off and I'm not going to get a picture of my first kayak bass. I'm going to run some line out, get him down here in the bottom of the boat. Ooh. There they are. Well, I hope I got this on camera pretty good. Unfortunately, my GoPro batteries died, and the last backup battery 
too scared to turn around and try and get out of my case. But I just got another uh, pretty pretty decent bass this time. I'm gonna get him off the hook and um, get a measurement on him. He would be a keeper if I was actually gonna keep him, but obviously I'm not in a kayak. But uh, I'll be right back. Let me get him off the hook so I can get the tape measure out. All right, so I got myself into this little corner of this or this uh, canal area and got brave enough to turn around and bring my dry box up front here so I could get my last GoPro battery. I had four, but turns out I didn't charge one of them. Um, I don't know. I hope this is picking up on the camera. I am literally surrounded by baby bass, little bluegill. I've seen some little perch. It's unfortunate I didn't get that 14-inch bass on camera because my GoPro died. <clears throat> I'm going to make my way back out into the main channel. I had some actually, not nothing to brag about, but there was like some 12 inch bass. There's one right there, maybe maybe 10 inches, nine inches. So nothing that would win a tournament, but it's cool to see how much fish there is in here. I had no idea. I'm uh, thinking I'm gonna, ooh, there's a nice one right there in front of me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What are the odds I get him to bite on the crank? Oh, it's so shallow here, I don't dare cast it. It's only like three feet deep. There's so many though. What's that? Anything? Yeah, I've caught two bass since I paddled in here. Yeah, both, going for it. both on uh, like sexy shad crankbaits. Having luck? Yeah, I never really had, I know a lot of people like the wacky, but I never had luck using it from shore. Really? I've had luck dangling it off the boat, but. See, I never used to catch any bass and I picked up some wacky worms and dude, it's like candy for them. <laughs> Maybe I got bad technique, I don't know. I'm not much, much of a bass fisherman. Yeah, me too. Really? Yeah, they stock them. Thank you. 
Got another one. There we go. Might be decent. Come on. Oh, please don't be a pike. Please don't be a pike. Oh, it looks like a bass. That's a bass. Here we go, here we go. Come on, come on. Come on. Another decent one. Yep. They're hammering them. Sure there's a better way to do this here. Oh, come on, that one barb, there we go. And that is bass number three on the uh, crankbait. They are just annihilating it today. I don't know if he'd be a keeper. He's maybe, he might be 14. He's maybe 12 or 13. We got a measuring thing down there. We got to move too much crap to get to it. My way out of a. Uh out of that canal system and I head back up to the the bayou where I launched at and call it a day. I got quite a paddle ahead of me, but I think on the way up I'm gonna throw this little shallow diver out and uh, let it troll behind me. It's pretty shallow all the way back. It's only a couple feet deep, so you never know. Maybe I'll get a, if I can find my rod holder. There it is. Maybe I'll get a pike or I'll get a bass or something. Maybe I'll get really lucky and get a muskie.